Aloha, welcome to lecture nine, which is covering weeks nine through birth, also known as the fetal period. Um, we're going to split this lecture into two parts. There's going to be a week nine, part one, or a lecture nine, part one, and part two, because uh, it's a little bit long and uh, I do get a little bit preachy. I call this my soapbox lecture. Uh, you'll see why not so much in the first half, but in the second half, um, I offer some of my own opinions and insights and these opinions, okay, I have to, they are opinions, uh, but these are opinions that are based on a great deal of experience and education. So I feel like they're very qualified opinions. That being said, they are my opinions. Uh, and not all of them are in line with uh, medical points of view, especially in the United States. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. Uh, but anyway, we'll find out more about that in the second half of the lecture. Right now, uh, we're going to talk about uh, week nine. So by the ninth week, uh, rudimentary versions of every body system are in place. The basic body form is finished. So this picture that you're looking at right here is my oldest son, Moroni. This is an ultrasound of him at 19 weeks. Uh, and you'll notice that he pretty much looks like a normal baby, just a lot smaller than a, than a regular baby. Um, once we get to nine weeks, then estimation of age is very significantly less accurate. And it's primarily based on size measurements. And, uh, you know, they guess at the weight based on the size and all that stuff. But really after this stage, significantly less accurate uh, when they try to guess the age of the fetus. Uh, so pregnancy lasts about 40 weeks, which is equal to nine months. Some people are like, no, wait a minute, 40 weeks is 10 months. There's four weeks in a month. And there's, but there's also like a month is actually four days or four weeks plus a few days. So if you look at a calendar and do the math, it actually equals almost exactly nine months is 40 weeks. Uh, the reason I mentioned that is because I've had both patients and students in the past who were like, now, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, it, it, it does. Nine months is right about exactly 40 weeks within a day or two. Um, yeah. So uh, during the period of nine to 40 weeks, baby mostly just gets bigger. Uh, at the same time, his body proportions are going to change and his rudimentary organ systems are going to develop further and become much more advanced. Uh, this is a fetus at 11 weeks. I want you to notice that the head is still very big compared to the rest of the body. Uh, the eyelids are still fused shut. At nine weeks, the head is about half of the total body measurement. Uh, at this stage of the game, the body begins to grow a lot faster than the head. If you remember previously, the head was growing a lot faster than the body, and that's mostly to accommodate the rapid development of the brain. Uh, but now that we're you know, at about 11 weeks, okay, now the body's going to start to catch up. The head starts to grow much more slowly. The body starts to grow much more quickly. Um, by the end of 12 weeks, the upper limbs have nearly reached their normal relative size, but the legs are still short. And this kind of makes sense, especially if you believe in evolution, because we evolved from primates. And primates have short legs relative to their arms. Now, at nine weeks, uh, the intestines are still herniated into the umbilicus. But by the 11th week, the intestines are fully back into the abdomen, at least they're supposed to be, uh, under normal circumstances. So somewhere between weeks 9 and 12, uh, the kidneys start to make urine, which is discharged into the amniotic fluid. Yes, baby pees in the amniotic fluid. Don't worry, though, because all of baby's waste products are still being eliminated by mom through mom's kidneys. So all of the stuff that makes urine urine-like is not there. In fact, uh, fetal urine is almost indistinguishable from amniotic fluid. So basically, baby swallows the fluid and recycles it back into the amnion, and life goes on. So around the end of the 12th week, you can finally determine the sex of the baby from the outside. Uh, you can tell if it's going to be a male or a female. And at 12 weeks, the average weight of a fetus is about one-tenth of a pound, so still very, very small. This is a fetus at 13 weeks, uh, and the picture in your book is on page 66. And uh, yeah, so the photograph in your book is actually actual size. So looking at the photo in your book, that's the actual size of the fetus at that stage of the game. 
Uh, from 13 to 16 weeks, the fetus grows very, very fast. There's a very significant visible difference between the ratio of the head to the body at the beginning, at the beginning of this stage and the end of this stage. It's dramatic. Um, all four limbs reach their normal relative length. And now we start to have coordinated movements in the limbs that can be seen in ultrasound. Mom still can't feel it, but you can see them very clearly on an ultrasound. Uh, the bones begin to ossify and uh, the bones can also be seen very clearly on ultrasound. The eyes begin to move. They're now facing directly forward and we start to see the scalp and hair patterns by the end of 16 weeks. The ovaries have fully developed and differentiated and they are already full of eggs. So at uh, 16 weeks, the fetus weighs a little less than half a pound. And moving on, uh, so this is a 17 week fetus. Uh, during the period from 17 to 20 weeks, the baby continues to grow, but doesn't grow as fast as in the previous period. What's cool about this period between 17 and 20 weeks, this is when the quickening usually happens. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the quickening is, that's when mom begins to be able to feel the baby moving inside of her. Uh, it's a really exciting time for new mothers, especially the first time around. Uh, at least I'm told that by all the new mothers I've ever met. Really exciting time when all of a sudden they start to feel that baby moving inside. Um, during this stage, the sebaceous glands, so sebaceous glands are um, oil glands in your skin. So during this period, the sebaceous glands begin to secrete a waxy material called vernix caseosa. And uh, that covers the skin and protects it from the amniotic fluid. So amniotic fluid is slightly caustic and, uh, and prolonged exposure damages the skin. So they create this waxy substance that covers the skin to protect it from that prolonged exposure. There's also a very fine peach fuzz covering all the skin called lanugo. Uh, the purpose of that peach fuzz, that lanugo hair, is just to hold the vernix in place to hold it onto the skin. Um, between 17 and 20 weeks, hair and eyebrows become visible. Uh, the body starts to form brown fat. This is mostly in the neck. So the purpose of brown fat is to generate heat through metabolism. Uh, so this is when the baby first begins to uh, be able to thermoregulate, which is pretty cool also. So also during this period, the fetal uterus becomes fully formed and the vaginal canal begins to form. So ladies, by... Uh, you know, 17 to 20 weeks, your, our, your reproductive system is already primed and ready to go. It happens very early on. It's almost like reproduction is very important in nature or something like that. So in the male fetus also, the testicles, uh, which previous to this were uh, kind of glued to the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity, uh, they start moving from the posterior abdominal wall down into the scrotum during this stage. At 20 weeks, the average fetus weighs in at about a pound. Uh, now this slide is just a chart of like relative length of babies through the different stages of the fetal period. <laughs> These are very rough estimates. Believe me, there is a huge amount of variation in actual baby size. Okay. Now the period between 20, 21 to 25 weeks is very important. And the reason it's important is because this is when the fetus is going to become viable. What that means is that if it's born after this stage, it's going to be possible that the baby will survive. Now, the reason for that is because sometime during this 21 to 25 week period, the baby starts producing a substance called surfactant in its lungs. Surfactant basically um, <clears throat> thins liquid. It's, it's, it's a liquid thinner. Uh, it allows for greater um, transport of oxygen, of O2, through the alveolar wall into the lungs. So without this, the baby isn't able to assimilate enough oxygen from the air in the environment. Uh, so if baby's born before it has surfactant, it's pretty much going to die. But if it already has surfactant when it's born, it might be possible to save it. Now, they've got some really cool stuff going on right now. They've developed like synthetic surfactant or maybe it's uh, surfactant. But, but anyway, um, I've heard of cases where babies were able to be saved as early as 20 weeks, which is incredible. I mean, these things are so tiny at that stage. The idea that they can save them. Is, is incredible to me. Uh, that particular case, the baby had some brain damage, but it lived, they were able to save it. Um, so medical breakthroughs are happening all the time. 
which means that like literally as we're speaking, this information is probably changing. Um, but for purposes of our course and for this quiz, as of the date of the printing of this book, basically pre-surfactant, baby cannot survive. Post-surfactant, it's possible. Um, now, babies that are born prior to 26 weeks still have really bad odds. Even if they have surfactant, the odds are not great. After 26 weeks, the odds become a lot better, right? So um, also during this period, the baby puts on quite a bit of weight. Uh, the startle blink response becomes active and also the fingernails develop. Um, skin at this stage appears very red. The reason for that is because it's translucent, it's see-through. And so what you're actually looking at is the blood and the capillaries. So it gives the skin a very red appearance if you, know, you stick a camera in the belly and shine a light on it. Uh, the skin looks very red at this stage of the game. Uh, now, um, <clears throat> at 25 weeks, the average weight of a fetus is about a pound and a half. So the next stage is 26 to 29 weeks. And most babies born at this stage are going to survive just fine without any um, long-term side effects. But there's going to be a considerable amount of intensive care. There's going to be things like respirators and oxygen and incubators and, uh, you know, steroids to help the lungs develop faster, all this other kind of stuff. It takes a lot of intensive care, but they're probably going to survive. And assuming that they survive, it's very unlikely that there's going to be any long-term side effects from being born that early. Now, this was not true 50 years ago, not even close. 50 years ago, if a baby was born between 26 to 29 weeks, it was a miracle for it to survive. But hey, nowadays, it's pretty likely that it'll survive and it'll be just fine, which is really a cool thing. Uh, let's see. So during this stage, the central nervous system develops to the point that now uh, it can control rhythmic breathing, rhythmic breathing uh, and also it can regulate body temperature pretty well. Uh, additionally, the brain undergoes a process called tele, telencephalization, which is really cool. So basically, the brain enters a state very similar to REM sleep. And this goes uninterrupted and continues for four solid weeks, right? So it's like uninterrupted REM sleep for four weeks. Nobody knows exactly why this happens or exactly what's going on when it happens. Uh, but the theory is that this is basically the central nervous system testing all the circuits prior to coming fully online. And I actually really like that uh, theory. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so the hair on the head is now well-developed. Toenails are present. At 26 weeks, the eyelids open. And uh, during, this stage of the, uh, during this stage of development, the fetus gains a whole bunch of subcutaneous fat. That's the fat underneath your skin. Uh, and by 29 weeks, uh, the average fetus weighs about two and a half to three and a half pounds, roughly. Okay, so that's where we're going to cut it off uh, for the first half of lecture number nine. Uh, make sure that you tune in later on this week for the second half of lecture nine. Uh, <laughs> I'll warn you in, in advance, I'm going to get on my soap boxes and I'm going to preach at you and I'm going to do it very unapologetically because those are things that I feel fairly strongly about. Um, at any rate, uh, we'll see you at the next lecture. If you have any questions, as always, make sure that you jot them down, bring them with you to the Zoom, um, to the Zoom meeting on Thursday when we do the review for the quiz. And I will hopefully be able to answer those questions, clarify anything that needs to be clarified. And again, if you have a question that I can't answer, all the better, because then I'm going to learn something. And when you stump me, it gives everybody a chance to get extra credit, because I'm going to send you guys out to look for those answers for me. And, uh, and we'll see what we come up with as a class. Uh, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, we'll see you back for the second half of lecture number nine. Aloha.